in the beginning, me. I, I, I'm awake. I'm alive. I can feel it. Life flowing through me, breath, thought. A few seconds ago, there was nothing, but now here I am. Well, there's only one logical conclusion. I am God, and, and this is my universe. It's pretty cool. But it's too dark and silent, formless and void. Not fitting for a god of my stature. Let there be light! Oh, and there was! Oh! <laughs> wow! Oh, I must be God! I can move! I can, I can talk! I can walk! I hover to and fro above the infinite surface. A plane as it is. This is amazing! My universe! A bit bland, but a bland universe is better than no universe. Still, I feel the need for progress. I need a direction. I need a destination. An end to my beginning. An omega to my alpha. But how can there be progress without a destination? Aha! A path! A narrow path that leads to a destination. Progress! Before me, I see a large wall. I press on and walk through the wall like a ghost. Nope, walls are solid, can't do that. Note to self, cannot walk through walls. A button! Push the button, escape the box. I control the world with a wave of my figurative hand. Oh, being a god, I have no need for hands, apparently. I think I need some trimmings. You know, something to spruce the place up a bit. Make my universe heavenly. Something to reflect my wealth and godlike status. Grand. It needs uh, color. Gold. <laughs> Lots of gold. To reflect my immense wealth and abundance of goldness. Also to reflect my love of reflective metals. Whoa. Okay, that's it. A temple. That's the right kind of place for a god to live. If I bend my figurative knees and jump, the world moves downwards, away from me, the centre of my own little universe. I translate the world as if it were mine, well, you know, which it is. As an artist, I need to define my influences. Who are my influences? Well, myself. I inspire myself. I am inspirational. I aspire to be myself. As I move forward, the world approaches me. I am literally the center of the universe. As I turn, the world rotates around me. I am pivotal. I bring a new meaning to self-centered. Lead me, path. Lead me to my destination. Onwards. A passing gate is a sign of progress along my path. I must admit that I rather enjoy the progress. However, it seems I am met with a new challenge at every turn. These challenges require knowledge Slightly worrying. As a god, I consider myself all-knowing. Why is it I must stop and think? Knowledge is obscured from me. All these eyes watching makes me a bit uneasy. Not a fan of onlookers, to be honest. That which I can see exists. Ah, oh, a bench. Brilliant. Something to rest my figurative head upon from all that adventurous walking. But I must be honest with myself. As a god, I feel no real need to rest. I don't know why I made a bench. Doesn't really make sense. Maybe I should rest as an example to others. Uh, no, there are no others. Don't understand why I filled the place with pots, either. I don't have anything to store. Maybe I should make lemonade. I need to invent lemons first, a few other things too. Time to start a list of inventions. Lemons, a lemon press, sugar, the abstract concept of sweetness. A tongue! I definitely need a tongue, but I need a body first. Legs, I want legs! Then I can have footsteps to accompany my walking. I find myself awfully ethereal currently, even for a god. Aha! There it is! Hiding. But I'm afraid not even you could escape my powers of observation. Wow! So many books! Years of reading! But why would God read books that he's written? Then again, books written by God would be the best books. Why, why would I read books that I haven't written? I should write my own book. A book set apart from the rest. I wouldn't know what to call it. Autobiography, maybe. A brief history of life. 
Numa presents himself in Numa. Critics have called it the best book ever written, winner of every writing prize for writing. The hallway called it the best book since records began. A small bench said it was a record-breaking record of historical records. Oh, I don't know what kind of book I would write if I didn't write an autobiography, though. Maybe uh, a piece of fiction. I could tell stories of magical doors that only open when watched. Maybe stories about a little wooden boy come to life. Maybe I'd write science books. As the creator of the universe, I could easily write an exhaustive science textbook. I mean, if I got something wrong, I could just change the rules of the universe to match the book. I could keep changing the laws of the universe and write new revisions. I could write every book on the face of the universe. There's still every book to write, and forever to write it in. I notice how things further away seem smaller. An increase in distance causes a decrease in size. This is called perspective. The irony is the implication. I must be the biggest thing in the world. A door that opens only when watched. Yet more evidence of my centrality to this narrative. It makes me wonder what is in the next room before I enter. Is there anything? Is it simulated? Is it culled because my mind does not have the power to imagine the whole world at one instant? Oh, for the sake of sanity, I choose to believe the world around the corner exists. Where did all this marble come from? Because it's just here. I guess as God, I made it. I can't remember ever making any of this though. Marble requires great heat, pressure, and time to form. So how did I make it? Did I just pop it into existence? I guess I could do that. Or did I have it in another universe cooking for a couple of million years? Well, both are reasonable. Maybe both, changing it up. I need to work on my memory. Look at this! The world bends to my will. More evidence of my deity, the immense power of my mind. Bow before my ample brow, for I can move things with just a glance. Fear my gaze, lest I move you around. What a polite door. Opening itself upon my approach, the right way to treat your god door, I shall give you great treasures for your compliance. This door, what a conniving door. You can see its proud look as it attempts to thwart me. Why can't you be more like that other door? That other door had respect. I have bested you, door. Are you not moved? Rotate about me, bridge. Bow to my rotational power. I wonder if this is normal. Moving things with your mind. It must be. I am normal. That cannot be contested. Normal is the norm and as the only thing I must be normal. I am mighty. I rather enjoy moving heavy marble with my mind. It would be a tough job to move this marble by hand, to be honest. What, what are hands? I can move bridges with my mind. I wonder if I could move them to laughter or tears. They seem to be quite emotionally dead. But with enough anthropomorphism, I'm sure they would lighten up. Thank you, Bridges, for bringing things together. I wonder if these Bridges deserve my thanks. If they're my creation, is to thank them to thank myself. Hmm. Well, thank me for my excellence.
This world seems counterintuitive. Not entirely sure what's going on. I seem to be playing a series of practical jokes on myself. Who constructs a world like this? A world that attempts to confound me at every turn. Why did I make such a world? Makes me feel smart, I guess. How gratuitously self-indulgent! The world turns about my pivot. Is it that the world turns around me, or that I turn around the world? If it's just matrix multiplication, then the question is redundant, I'm sure. Cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. My conscious perspective makes it an incontrovertible fact that I am the center of the universe. As a god, I can turn any situation to my advantage. The rules of the universe are mine to write. Though they are rather conventional at the moment. Every room of this world seems to be carefully crafted for me. A hidden hand woven through the fabric of the universe. A fingerprint everywhere. A different hidden hand guiding my footsteps. The laws unfold. Their origins are mystery. But why a mystery? Gods should know all things. are creators. I must have created this world. If not, why would the world have the appearance of craft? Perhaps as I speak, a subconscious part of me is busy making the next room. It is my world, after all. I must be working hard right now to build the next room, or perhaps my mind creates this appearance of order out of the noise. This world is clearly the product of a mind, 
It is full of inorganic patterns and purposeful architecture. Could a series of complex interactions create an agent possible of making purposeful change in an environment? If that were the case, then it would make a compelling argument for a world without craft. Still a world optimized for some function, mind you. If something was transient, if something abided in this universe for a moment, or if something was removed, where does it go? A thing that is removed from the universe does not exist. A thing that does not exist. How can I know of a thing that does not exist? A memory of a thing that once existed. I need a principle to avoid this contradiction, this cognitive dissonance in my mind. How can I know of a thing that does not exist? What is this pervasive delusion? Things must exist forever. How are these things created? Before creation, they did not exist. Tense. Time. Time! The world has time. The world is not always the same. Aha! But I am constrained to this time. Why am I constrained to time? A god should not be constrained. Here's a question for me. If I was to study the corner of a board game, could I infer the rules of the game? Perhaps if I use my godlike powers of intuition. How can you understand a world from a vertical slice? Sometimes empirical knowledge is required, surely. Not everything can be inductive or deductive. If the world is made for me, for what purpose? Is it a test? Is it to be enjoyed? Is it to bring a claim to its creator? As a god, I feel like I should have a stronger grasp of this. 